Hello everyone and welcome back to Shelf Life, a podcast where we discuss books, their philosophies and most importantly, a personal relationship with a book. Um today we have um before we get into what we have today, let me just tell you, uh I got some really really amazing feedback with respect to last week's episode which was on Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. um it was a book that a lot of you liked it was a podcast that you that a lot of you liked and i want to take a moment to mention one specific uh comment that i got that really struck me and i thought it was a very very brilliant observation uh it was made by mr nikhil gadoria he is an avid listener of our podcast and um he a- alongside a lot of beautiful things that he said about the podcast and about um how it was analyzed and everything uh he said a very very smart uh observation he pointed it out and i just wanted to share it with you all uh in case uh you want to ruminate on it uh or you want to just you know think about it a little bit more uh so he said that deep within the dark recesses of every human mind lies a latent lolita be it wealth women or power um this is his exact quote and i thought it was so uh so smart and it was so on point and apt uh, with relation to what we were talking about last week if you missed that episode by any chance you can always check it out we have a playlist ready uh on our channel you can always go and check that out um he also made another very important observation he talked about how american beauty which is uh, a hollywood film um which has kevin spacey in it i guess um and it won a lot of oscars and everything um it's it's a brilliant film and he 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 mentioned that and he said that it had a very similar tonality um and the way that it deals with pedophilia as a subject it it it's done extremely artistically so uh, thanks for pointing that out and thanks for listening to our episodes thanks for listening to our podcast it really um you know gives us a lot of encouragement when you send in your feedback when you send in comments when you um discuss with us your opinion or uh, just have a chat with us about what you thought was right what you thought uh what you felt like during the podcast when you were listening to it it really means a lot to me and i read all of it and i appreciate all of it and i would love if you kept sending it uh so thank you for that um moving on i want to tell you that today we have a very very special guest. Uh I want to introduce you to this very special guest. Um and the reason I decided uh to have her here today is because she's the reason I met the book that we're going to be talking about today. She's the reason I was introduced to it. Uh she's the reason I read it and I think I would like to think that she's also the reason why this book is so influential to me and so powerful and why I love it so much. Um uh, our guest today, I mean of course because of the lockdown and because of quarantine, she couldn't be here in person. Um but she was kind enough to send in um some voice clips of her, you know, noting down her observations and everything, her anecdotes. and we will be putting that in i will be putting that in uh during the podcast in little bits and pieces and um that's how she's going to be here on <laughs> this week's episode um and let me just tell you a little bit about her her name is dr sunita kholke she's been a practicing dentist for more than 25 years um and she is absolute best in her profession uh she's also a mountaineer uh neo mountain and she's probably climbed it or she's probably thinking about climbing it <laughs> so that's there's that uh she loves mountains she loves traveling she loves the outdoors uh she's also an avid reader and someone who listens to all the episodes of our podcast and sh- someone who loves our podcast um so and the reason why how i know her and everything uh let me tell you that as well uh she 
was uh, she is my mother's best friend they've been best friends since, since dental college uh, you know almost 25 years ago and it's a friendship that has really stood the test of time and something that i really you know aim to have someday uh, because uh, they literally speak to each other <laughs> every single day about every little thing that happens and it's 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 very endearing to see that um and the way that i uh came across this book the way that i met this book and the strongest memory that i have of the book that i'm going to be talking about which is be the living by ayn rand uh published in 1936 uh the way that i came c- across it is actually quite boring so <laughs> i didn't really want to share this anecdote i didn't really want to share the story because it was actually the lamest way i've <laughs> come across a book um i was just so bored during quarantine during i think the first month of quarantine um that uh, i had already finished reading a couple of books that um uh, i'd been meaning to read and you know i was really bored out of my mind i really wanted to read something else as well uh but i couldn't really lay my hands on a good one you know there there are times when you when you're really looking for something to read uh but you can't really find out what it is and you try a lot of books you you try on books like you try on clothes uh you read like the first chapter maybe or the second chapter um and you realize yeah okay maybe maybe this not this one maybe i'm going to try another one and then you keep trying and then you keep trying and you realize nothing makes sense nothing is uh, interesting enough um and so that i was in that uh rut and um that's when you know i was really going over every single book um uh, in my bookshelf i was really looking for just just about anything that could capture my um uh, attention and that's when i came across uh, a very old copy of we the living by ayn rand uh it was in like a you know dusty corner old corner of my bookshelf uh it's an extremely cold, old copy and um it had uh, in inside um the cover it had a little inscription and it said um it was dated 2nd june 2009 which is my mother's birthday um and it said you know uh this is my favorite book a book that i have read over and over again and that still speaks to me and i hope it speaks to you too love sunita uh and you know and and my and um our guest had obviously gifted this book to my mother but when i read that i i was like this could be interesting you know i i, I especially like when someone uh, personally gifts someone else a book i i find that very um enduring i f- i feel like it's a it's almost like you're giving them a part of yourself you're telling them this is something that was important to me this is something that i spent time and energy on and that really spoke to me and i'm giving it to you because i wanted to speak to you because i think you're important enough because i think you're smart enough or good enough or whatever it is right so i think it's very endearing and i just picked it up for that reason alone um you know i i really wanted to see just how much it meant um to our guest and 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 what it could have made her feel and when i started reading the book i absolutely could not put, put it down um it's 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 something else let me give you a little bit of um back story let me just explain to you um you know what the book is about so we the living was written in 1936 by ayn rand um it is a book set in post revolutionary russia uh where a dictatorship of the proletariat is prevailing so the red flags um red flags swaying on every corner of every street uh it is a time and world where being born rich meant being born burdened um it is a time where literally if you do not toil you shall not eat 
um in simpler words it was a time uh when the communist revolution in russia really took up um uh, power and pr- position and um that's when their government was formed so it, it it depicts a very real picture of a very real time um and i had never really read i mean i read russian authors before um i read anton chekhov i read um leo tolstoy but i hadn't really read uh, a woman a russian woman um or i hadn't really read about russia during the communist regime um so i just picked it up for that reason alone and it interested me from the very first line um and i think if you've read ayn rand before you would know that that her books have this kind of magical element to it where you pick it up you read the first line and the first line alone is enough to hook you uh i can give you an example so atlas shrugged which is another one of ayn rand's books um it it starts with a question who is john galt that's it that's how it starts and again i mean throughout the book you're going to understand that john galt is not you know i don't want to give away <laughs> atlas shrugs plot uh but all of her books start with this uh this element of uh mystery but also at the same time magic and that uh was what really struck me and now when i've you know finished the book and everything my strongest memory of the book is obviously how it shaped or how it tweaked my um uh, idea of communism and socialism as someone who's read the communist manifesto who does believe that every person should be equal and there shouldn't be a capitalistic society in the sense that people shouldn't be capitalistic to their core um as as someone who who believes that you know there is um some kind of uh divide that has to be gapped uh, that has to be bridged by equality and um uh, socialistic ideals this book really came as a shock to me uh because it spoke about everything that i considered as a utopia and it made it dystopic so imagine your uh, dream turned into the worst possible nightmare um and that was <laughs> kind of in in like a glimpse i think that's how it felt um but i want to take you to another bit i mean this is how i met the book in quarantine when i'm 18 years old i guess my i would i would say that my ideas of socialism and communism are also uh shaped by the environment and the world that i live in right now we are obviously a lot more political than we were say 5 10 years ago um there's so much happening in the world and there is a very strong socialist movement that's going on so i think my my uh, opinions as an 18 year old is also shaped by that but i want to give you an insight into what our guest uh, dr sunida her opinions because um uh, she read it at a different time right and i and i this is a question i asked her and she was kind enough to send in a audio uh, a audio uh an audio recording <laughs> um of uh her um telling us her anecdotes so uh let's listen to that right here i read her books when i was in my 20s ayn rand became my favorite author I very much identify and agree with her philosophy. All her characters are strong and ready to pay the price for their beliefs, even if it means not a happy outcome in the end, but they stick to what they believe in and um, that's what I love most about all her books. And We the Living, of course, is my favorite. So like I said, um this is the world of Ayn Rand's We the Living. This is a uh, a very dystopic world which is presented to you as a reality as a very very real um environment in a situation where this is happening and you know it's happening uh for a fact uh but you can't touch it you can't do anything about it 
um and in this world we meet uh, our guns a blazing heroine uh, kira argunova uh, who's been described as one of you know the best heroines ever written best female characters ever written uh, strongest most uh, daring bold all of these words um and it's not just her the book has to has two other characters andre and leo and uh, it's essentially it tracks these three people's lives um throughout you know the rise and fall the rise and rise of the communist um government um and it tracks the impact that it has on their personal lives and what happens to them as individuals um because that's you know that goes along with andrian's philosophy so um but you you see all of it through kira's point of view of course and the you know this is where i think if you're someone who reads and even someone who doesn't read and who really wants to start reading um if you're someone who really loves plot uh stories where there's a very strong plot uh there's something happening every chapter every other page i think you would really really enjoy this book because it is so pacey and um it is it you know there's something happening every minute every every chapter the story just keeps going forward it doesn't give you time to rest um uh, there's no slow n- narrative it's all fast everything happens in an instant but at the same time it is contrasted with um the lack of growth and development in their personal individual characters um in their individual lives uh, of the characters it is contrasted with how these individuals feel stuck in the situation that they're in in the world that they're in in uh, the world that keeps changing they don't um and you know it's it's really beautiful that a book like this uh you know could have a very strong plot driving it and at the same time could really delve into the psyche of these three characters uh you know cuz i mean if you've read the book you'd know kira is written um uh, the character of kira uh, is written with such brilliance and such tenderness uh she's described in such a beautiful manner that um i think you will i felt I, i felt so connected to kira's character um i think you know she's described as a very young 18 year old who's just trying to figure out life but who's also very determined and uh focused and everything and i felt very very um connected to that character we the living has three characters out of which kira is the most alive uh she is very passionate about her life about her own love her profession the way she wants to live and her own moral values so she is the most individualistic character i found and i was most impressed with uh she doesn't believe that uh, people have to live for the state she completely believes every one has a moral right to be alive for their own happiness and live life the way they want to live and also she goes to any length for uh, the love of a life that is leo she follows no rules and she feels guilty about nothing when it concerns her wants and desires in life uh, i was very impressed with the individuality and uh, the portrayal of her whole personality um uh, and moving on when i was speaking to our guest again uh, taking it back to her when i was speaking to her when i sent her a couple of questions that i wanted to talk to her about um i there was this one question that kept uh coming back to me you know when i was thinking about what the theme of the book could be and what the strongest theme of the book could be um and that's when i thought that you know we the living is not essentially about communist russia and how it um uh, infringes the rights of its citizens we the living is more just a story of love um and the inherent conflict that lies in the anatomy of love 
um i think you know these that's what i really you know that's what i sent uh to dr smita as well that's what i asked her like do you think anyone in this book uh with the definition of love that we understand today um as contrast with uh the definition of love that exists in a completely dystopic universe do you think anybody loved anybody in that novel do you think it was possible for them to love someone else and you know this is a question we can ask ourselves is it possible for us humans to love beyond ourselves and if it is possible should we be loving beyond ourselves how important is it to align yourself with an idea with a purpose with a state how important is it to have an ideology and this is a question that of course you know i mean we're really getting into the ph- philosophical aspect of things but i think we that's something that we need to think about what do we understand as love today how do we define it um or in an ideal world how do we define it because we see how warped it is in a uh, collective estate how is it different in our country in our definition in our viewpoint um this is how ayn rand presents it very differently and again getting it back to the question that i asked sunita ma'am uh, i asked her do you think anybody loved anyone else in this novel and let's listen to what she had to say i feel the most uh, giving character in the story has been andre he is honest idealistic who believes in the state and he realizes only later in life uh, that communism isn't liberating people but crushing them down and breaking them and he sees the suffering of kira where he believed that um, uh, communism is a solution for people like kira who would flower under it so the person who loved anyone else uh, most would be andre for sure and uh, he regrets his devotion to the lie of communism and sets kira free in the end so he really loves selflessly and truly so that's what i was uh, thinking about a lot um, you know the concept of love in this book and how it connects to the other themes and the you know most important theme which is of self interest um, you know the ayn rand's philosophy is that you should live for yourself that you must live because you have been given a life because you deserve to live a life on your own terms on how you demand it um and she calls selfishness a virtue in fact she has a book that says the virtue of selfishness um but the beauty in we the living as opposed to all her other novels is that in rand you know maybe she does it uh intentionally maybe she doesn't but she plays around with her own philosophy she twirls it around and she lifts it off the ground and she you know just puts it on his head all together at the same time and she plays around so well with her own idea because love is the most selfless thing that a person can do it is the most selfless act it is where you place another person above yourself um uh, all the time and even kira who is a character who demands to live her life the way she wants to live her life the way uh she dreams of living her life just for herself um she does the most selfless thing too she loves in the most selfless way possible um as does andre uh who has you know the same kind of ideals that uh kira has even though he's a member of the communist party and he is um his love is essentially the state uh so that you know it it really thinks about you you really get to think about that a lot if love is the most selfless act are the characters really seeking their self interest and do you think that ayn rand knew what she was doing by making this you know 
a love story um in a traditional sense do you think she knew that the contradiction would come very very uh close to you know just completely eliminating <laughs> her philosophy um and it's a very interesting thing you know and i i just i don't know i just i just remember a really good quote that i had read by martin amis uh it said uh you can never love anything more than something you can miss um i'm not sure if it completely <laughs> fits in here but i think you can um, think about that yeah you can never love anything more than something you can miss um moving on i think another thing that i wanted to point out here like we talked about the writing style but um the the way that you know this is a concept that i find a lot of times you know that really strikes me um that i really appreciate is when the writer can in some way or the other bring out his own persona through his words so essentially when the writer can bring out what he is he or she is truly is at their core when they can find a way to somehow bring it to the words some somehow bring it to paper i find that the most um beautiful and the most um i think it, it, it's it, it's the most sacrificial thing that you could do for your art and um i think ayn rand i feel like she really she is one of the people who really does that every time she writes uh she is absolutely unapologetic about her style about her characters about what they say and do um she makes no uh, excuses for them um and you know another writer that is very similar that i can think of um is arundhati roy and you know if you've read her work you would know everything that she writes has her own self in it uh and i don't mean that character wise i mean that style style wise uh <laughs> i mean that um in every way possible i think there's a little bit of herself in all of her works um and you see that you see the persistence you see the struggle you see even the faith uh of the person writing the story while reading the story that they've written right and that connects you know that that story of persistence and faith and struggle that is timeless that can you know live on for generations to come uh, it doesn't change no matter what no matter what government is in power no matter what ideology you believe in um even right now we're in such a time of crisis when it comes to not just you know the virus but even politically all around the world um there are huge movements going on and s- stories of persistent stories of individuals um no matter what they believe in they always come through so thinking about that i bel- i felt that it would be more apt if um our guest today even though she's not here uh could answer the question that we keep coming back to at the end of every podcast which is why was the story told um so i want to completely leave it up to her and i think she can sum up the whole thing for us here we go we the living is uh, almost an autobiographical book by ayn rand so it's uh, a life story of her own self and uh, she has mentioned somewhere that she wrote the book and the story to get russia out of her system and it was her way of letting people know what's happening out there with that uh, i'm going to end this episode um and to end it i want to quote um uh, two quotes today <laughs> i'm going to send you off with two special quotes uh the first one is by we the living um the book that we discussed uh by Ayn Rand and I think it was the most beautiful thing I read um it said to a life which is a reason unto itself that's it 
um that's all that the quote says but it's so wholesome and the other one that i wanted to talk about is <laughs> a lot more contemporary uh, i i'm not sure if there are any money heist uh, fans on this podcast but if there are um there's this one quote that i heard and that really struck me um it said we're all going to die with this i toast to life and that's it uh from shell's life for this week uh i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope uh you enjoyed what our guest had to say um uh, this is a quite a tough format to ha- do uh considering we're not in the same place but i really wanted her to be in on this podcast and uh it was a pleasure to speak to her um and to contact her and every- everything uh so thank you dr smita for being here for sending in your anecdotes for chipping in in every way that you could um next week we're going to have another guest and that guest is my mother <laughs> because lockdown and we can't call anyone at home uh we're going to be discussing a very uh personal book um uh, and i'm going to just tell you the name it's called jibel's children i'm not sure if you've read it uh it's quite old but if you have then um that's brilliant if you still want to read it you can check it out it's called jibel's children buy it on amazon or somewhere just read it and come prepared um and that's it for this week thank you so much for listening i hope you enjoy this episode i'll see you next time